Kurt Voss, welcome to Coffee and CEOs. Without a good culture, you don't have a brand to sell. Culture serves as a multiplier, where if you have a bad culture, it's a divisor. For people who are not familiar with Amerilux, can you tell us a little bit about the company? Sure, love to. Uh, we started from scratch in 2004, and uh, we brand ourselves as a value-adding distributor. Uh, of different products. Most of those products end up in some sort of a building and construction application, although not 100% of them do. By value adding, we mean that we do more than just distribute product, meaning put them on shelves in high quantities and distribute them in lesser quantities. Uh, we typically uh, add some value to everything that we distribute. Everything from cutting a polycarbonate sheet to size, to length, to full-blown uh, manufacturing uh, assembling fabrication work uh, related to our products. So um, our focus is taking out as many uh, links in the value chain as we can for our customers uh, that happen to incorporate our product into their whatever they're doing. I'm sure that's contributed to some of the growth that you've experienced. So over the last, would you say, 10 years or so, you've had a pretty awesome growth story. Can you share some of the things you feel maybe contributed to that growth? Well, I'd like to, to think that it has to do with uh, CEO leadership, but uh, it's probably not the case. <laughs> I'm uh, sure it has something to do with it. But uh, Well, I think it's a combination of things. Uh, I think that um, we did a lot of things right uh, early on, almost subconsciously, and as we grew into ourselves and into our company, we became a lot more intentional about doing those things even more and really focusing on those things. In a presentation I saw you give recently, you said, great culture, equals great employee engagement. That employee engagement leads to great customer experiences. Can you tell me a little bit about how you went about defining your culture and maybe some of the inspiration for some of your core values? Sure, well I would say that uh, I always believed that uh, culture was important. You know how it is when you start a business from scratch. You have a lot of people wearing a lot of different hats and you're scrambling from in every aspect of, of the enterprise, uh, managing cash flow, finding new customers, continuing to always modify your value proposition uh, to make it something that the marketplace wants. Uh, at, a, at a given point in time, uh, after we had had a fair amount of success, uh, we thought it'd be a good idea to be more intentional about that. So we went about the process of defining who we are and figuring out you know, what things we're doing right and then be more intentional about continuing to do, do those things as opposed to do them just because they came naturally sure. to us. We came up with 10 values uh, that, uh, and then a, a, a couple paragraph explanation of each one of those. And a couple things we tried to do. One is we didn't want it to be Harvard MBA speak. We right. want it to be Ameriluck speak. Mm -hmm. So we wanted it to have people think of, for lack of a better way of saying it, Ameriluxisms. Yeah. And so uh, we started with, when, when we rolled this out, we rolled it out not only to our employees, but also to everyone that we dealt with. We would go to our customers and first say, this is how we choose to succeed. Our culture statement is entitled, uh, this is how Amerilux chooses to succeed. Yeah. And so, first of all, we gained a recognition of that, but then an agreement on that, that this is how we choose to succeed. Do you agree that you want us to succeed in that way? And uh, we didn't have any case where our customer would say, no, 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 that's not how we determine success. And so then we went about the process of, as we continued to do business together, look at ourselves and our relationship with that lens on to make sure that we were being good at those, that way, in yeah. addition to some abstract, yeah, we're doing a good job together. Yeah, that's and as And as we went about uh, quantifying that and boiling this notion of that, that is typically abstract mm -hmm. culture into something that's concrete and this is how we choose to succeed together uh, and then looking at ourselves that way uh, I thought that I think that's very powerful and continues to be yeah can you talk to me a little bit about how you would advise maybe um, a peer who wants to focus more on operational efficiency or driving sales or other things maybe and not so much on culture. Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, to be clear, I think that there's a lot of important things that business enterprises need to do to be successful. So I'm not here to say that any one of those things aren't important. 
I'm saying that culture is the most important, and I'll tell you why. If you compare it to, say, strategy, and one of the things that I've talked about is that a good culture trumps good strategy. Now, to be clear, you want to have both, obviously. But culture is one of those things that no matter what other important uh, management or uh, important aspect of managing an enterprise, culture is one of those things that will bring any one of those things up, whereas the converse is not necessarily true. So if you compare a company that has a, a absolutely very perfect strategy, but they don't have a very good culture, compared to a company that really isn't really good at strategy yet, but they've got a dynamic culture and all the ways that you define that. Companies with good cultures become companies that have good strategies, whereas the same isn't necessarily the case where a company with a good strategy, somehow that leads to a better culture. Uh, so if you take any uh, key item that you have to deal with when you're running a business, if you have a good culture, that culture is going to enhance that and make it better.